essentially the Chinook brings them home. The Chinook brings them out of the battlefield. The Chinook brings them Christmas presents. The Chinook takes them to and from. The moment they heard the blade slap of the Chinook inbound, they knew that they were going to survive. And for me, that is the most powerful message. I mean, the Chinook is um, it's all about lift. It's all about moving people and equipment around the battlefield. And uh, it's fair to say it's designed incredibly to undertake that role. And when you speak to some of the um, some of the survivors from Afghanistan, when they were laying on the battlefield being treated by the medics, the moment they heard the blade slap of the Chinook inbound, they knew that they were going to survive. And I think that's part of what instills the pride within not just the Chinook force, but anyone who's involved with, uh, with supporting that force. The warfares that we've been in, and especially in the last 20 years, hot, high deserts, the aircraft is just unbelievable. The power, its resilience, its redundancy, its capabilities. I mean, just flying any helicopter at greater than 3,000 feet altitude, but at 50 degrees Celsius, the air is ridiculously thin. So having tandem rotor blades where all the power goes straight into that lift allows you to gain so much more out of the aircraft. We've met the 40 year milestone with the aircraft recently. And when you look back on those four decades, um, it is incredible to think that I don't think there's been one year when the Chinook has not been deployed on active service somewhere around the world, which is absolutely remarkable. It's very distinctive because, of course, it's got two um, huge rotor heads um, above it. What that does is it not only generates a huge amount of lift that enables us to lift um, extremely heavy things or lots of people, whether it's inside uh, cargo or outside cargo, um, but it also means that there's no transmission train for the tail rotor, which means that cabin space is all available for the troops or their equipment. And I think that's really the defining feature of the helicopter in terms of what it's designed for. By moving the tail rotor out of the way, you've got a significantly greater area to um, egress troops and equipment down the back. And the power to weight ratio is significantly improved as a result because you're not driving the aircraft and trying to stop the aircraft from spinning. The way the cabin is designed, you know, where the, the ramp will come down and you can offload troops, uh, you know, 40, 40 guys will come off in about 10, 15 seconds, you know, with the adrenaline pumping and going out to do the mission. So really ideal, you know, as opposed to some other aircraft, I suppose, where they have to climb down off the, uh, the aircraft as opposed to run off the aircraft, I think that makes a huge difference. The crews that flew the Chinook uh, respected the aircraft. It was designed to be triply redundant in every critical system it had, uh, from hydraulics to uh, transmissions. It's, it can take a pounding and still get you out of trouble, and it's proved that on countless occasions. So whilst it's still a hunk of metal and fluids, um, we had a enduring fondness for it. We knew it was going to get us home. But once you get over the size, the capability, then you get to understand the performance. Like a sports car, you would not believe that something that big <laughs> could be so maneuverable. Those of us in the Chinook community, the answer is always two Chinooks. We just don't know what questions. So it doesn't matter whether you're going to sea, whether you're going to the desert, whether you're going to the Arctic, the answer is to Chinooks.